So our first case involves a 36-year-old Caucasian male. He has an undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma that's deeply seated within his retroperitoneum. It's about 8 centimeters, and unfortunately, it's unresectable. His ECOG performance status is zero, and he's referred to a center of excellence for sarcoma. And he comes looking to see what the best treatment plan for him would be. So a typical patient in this situation, we're looking at very carefully. You know, the first question we ask our surgeons is, if we're able to make this smaller, would it become resectable? The next question becomes, what sort of underlying comorbidities do you have? Even if you're at 36, there's patients that we found that have unsurprising heart failure. And so what is their cardiac status? What actually do they have diabetes? You know, what is all their other medical problems? And so we have to begin by putting together a true picture of what this patient actually presents as. And so as we build this out, the first question comes from the surgeon, which is, can we actually make an attempt at cure if we can shrink the tumor? And in this case, I believe we were told no. It was invading through things that you just couldn't resect because you really, it was invading through things that you couldn't resect. And because of that, this is a patient with locally advanced disease that's non-resectable. So then we then look at him and he has adequate heart function, he has adequate kidney function, he has no hepatitis C, he has no HIV, his liver function looks good. And we say, you're a candidate for doxorubicin-based therapy. Since we're not going to make an attempt to cure, the use of ifosamide in the situation may add a lot of toxicity without a lot of long-term benefit. And so I think we would opt for giving this patient adriamycin with liratumab, given the overall survival benefit over uh, just giving doxorubicin alone. So prior to the FDA approval of liratumab, the approach to this patient would have been palliative chemotherapy likely doxorubicin-based as a frontline therapy, then other lines of therapy. Subsequently, now that we have aliratumab and we have access to that, we'll be adding that to his anthracycline in this case.